Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Texas Street Stories, where we talk about what happens on these Texas streets. On today's episode, we will be talking the fall of the Tri-City Bombers, founded in Far San Juan and Alamo in the 1980s, has grown to have members across the country. This organized gang follows specific rules and regulations known as Las Reglas to ensure loyalty and participation in criminal activity. The TCB has a decision-making hierarchy, including a person in charge in each city, as well as positions within the organization such as president, generals, captains, lieutenants, sergeants, soldiers, and prospects. Non-members who do business with or work for the TCB are referred to as associates. TCB membership is for life, and many members have tattoos representing their allegiance to the gang. TCB members pay monthly fees to support incarcerated members and further the illegal activities of the gang. What was once a petty street gang has evolved into a dangerous organization with the guidance of the Texas Syndicate. With the help of an ex-member of the Tri-City Bombers who witnessed betrayal, lies, deceit, murder, and greed firsthand, we aim to shed light on these organizations. Innocent victims lose their lives due to the greed of these organizations. We will see that while these organizations preach loyalty and brotherhood, loyalty is not reciprocated. The ex-member had been a loyal member since his teenage years, on his way to becoming a high-ranking member. He was a moneymaker for the organization, known for getting things done. He had proven his loyalty time and time again, taking his oath to the Tri-City Bombers seriously. However, he witnessed firsthand the disloyalty within the organization. When Tri-City Bombers member Robert Bones Garza was fighting for his life on death row, a suicide mission ordered by a higher-ranking member named Jesus Carlos Rodriguez, other members were having children with Garza's wife. Rodriguez had ordered the hit on two women in 2002, who had testified as witnesses against him in a shooting incident in 2001. Rodriguez was sentenced to 20 years in prison for this offense. During his time in prison, Rodriguez ordered a hit on the two women, Nora Rodriguez and Mercedes Quintero, who worked at a nightclub in Donna. Rodriguez had already been sentenced for the crime, so there was no point in silencing the victims. He simply wanted to prove a point. In this video, we aim to expose the truth behind these organizations and the devastating consequences they have on innocent lives. X started to witness the betrayal firsthand when Ricky Bocanegra, a carnal in the Tri-City Bombers, was moving cocaine to Chicago with his cousin that lived over there. Everyone knew Ricky for his beautiful customized car, a beautiful candy apple red Honda Civic with custom wheels. He would also use his custom car to transport large amounts of cocaine to the Chicago area with the help of his cousin that was from Chicago. He was known for having the purest uncut cocaine. He would prefer to sell quality over quantity, creating a long line of loyal customers. He was known to sell eight balls on the street for half the price of his competitors. Ricky was also a small business owner. He had a drive through beer store and on the same street he had a smoke shop. Ricky was also a pillar in his neighborhood. He would look out for the youngsters when they need supplies he would provide in his neighborhood. Ricky was loved by his community, but not everyone was happy with Ricky. The local police department had raided his business numerous times but to no success. He was under the watchful eyes of the law, but he did not expect his brothers would be the ones to take him out. His so-called brothers were watching how Ricky was becoming successful in his ventures. They were not happy with him paying his fees to the organization. They wanted it all for themselves, and they seen Ricky had built something that they wanted for themselves. So on January 26, 2009, Joe Lee decided it was time to take what Ricky had. He was planning to make it look like a robbery gone bad. That day at the smoke shop, his wife was outside smoking a cigarette while she was pregnant. That's when she noticed a masked robber that was holding up the store. A big fat ass called Biggie, a prospect under Joe Lee, strapped with 9mm, was there to protect Ricky and his family. Was outside in his car and not paying attention. He was not able to fire a shot at the robbery suspect as he was tending to Ricky's wife as the robber shot her on his way out of the store. She survived from her wounds. All along, while the hit was taking place, Joe Lee was parked across the street in a black 2003 Impala, making sure the hit went as planned. With Ricky out the way, Joe Lee and his crew were able to open up their own legitimate business. They were also able to keep all his drug connections as well. When he ex saw what they did to Ricky, that was loved by his community, he started to have doubts but he continued to function. X knew what he had signed up for so he continued to follow orders and generate money for the organization. X used to get his drugs from Ricky, but with Ricky out the picture, his new supplier became Joe Lee. 
Just like with Ricky, the higher ranks started to take notice that X was moving large amounts and was making a decent amount of money. X loyalties made him blind to the unseen danger that laid ahead. He was following orders making money for the organization he was doing his part for the organization. So he did not think he was bad in the organization, but the greed of the higher ranks. They made the decision that it was X's time to go. So a month later after Ricky's death, X's was at a party where he was talking and making plans with a local girl that was known to him and his brothers for that night when he was ambushed and stabbed over 10 times and beaten to where he lost consciousness. When X awoke from his attack, he was handcuffed to the medical bed. He was being charged with possession of a controlled substances. But once X started to think he knew it was a hit for him, he had recognized one of the attacker's voice. He knew it was a power play to keep what he had built same story as Ricky. Not only did X survive his attack, he was told to take the charge. Even through, he was attacked his remained loyal. He was told by his brothers that if he did not fall into the Tri-City Bombers tank in the county jail, he would be dropped. X's blind loyalty caused to fall into the Tri-City Bombers tank, where he received a disciplinary actions and was told to hand over all drug connections to his fellow brothers. X continued to function, even though the organization had did him dirty, he continued to represent. Until one day, he got a visit from a producer from Gangland. X was asked if would like to participate in the show. This was the perfect time for X to leave the Tri-City Bombers. He went to visit and never returned to the Tri-City Bombers tank. X felt it was the right thing to do. He had been loyal to the Tri-City Bombers. After dropping out of the Tri-City Bombers, he was sentenced to federal time where he was able to function as solo person. They did not recognize the Tri-City Bombers as family, only a street gang. He was able to function as a solo for his remaining time. X would see other Tri-City Bombers join prison gangs like the PRM. Those members would have to cover or crack any tattoos affiliated with their previous gang. X was able to use the money from his interview to start a new life. Once he was released, he moved and got his CDL where he provide for his family and lives in an undisclosed location for fear of retaliation. He still has green light for his cooperation in the documentary of Gangland. He never told on anyone he has good paperwork. A few months later after X attack, on October 2009, an innocent mom named Erica Reyes was murdered that was in a relationship with a higher ranking member. Jeffrey Dragon Juarez was a higher ranking member that found out his wife was cheating on him maybe with a rival. Ia Mann burst into Erica Reyes' Alamo apartment about 8 p.m. Saturday and fired several gunshots into her chest and face, killing her. With the help of Sheriff Lupe Trevino, the case was made like a gang murder. But the truth was, Jeffrey Dragon Juarez could not take her cheating on him. Plus, she knew too much about his criminal activities. Purported Tri-City Bombers gang leader Jeffrey Dragon Juarez told police he saw the man shoot the 28-year-old woman at their home in the Oak Square apartment complex that night, with their baby girl by his side. An innocent mom lost her life because Jeffrey Dragon Juarez couldn't take Erica cheating on him that she had to go. She was just in the way, just like Ricky and X. X member also witnessed the police corruption of Lube Trevino. Lube Trevino, the sheriff of Hidalgo County, was for the take. He would fabricate evidence to his liking to close cases. He would solve gang hits just by saying it was a love triangle gone bad. But in reality, it was a paid hit. It worked out for Lube Trevino and the shooter case closed and the shooter would get a lesser sentence. Lube Trevino had a lot to play in the violence of Hidalgo County. We he choose to become a criminal. The streets were no longer safe. Yes, working with the cops had its benefits, but it also exposed them to the federal government. In 2011, this indictment represents our continued cooperative commitment to infiltrating and dismantling violent gangs who victimize our communities through random acts of violence, firearm violations, and drug distribution, said U.S. Attorney Moreno. Gang activity represents a major organized crime threat, and we will continue to work hand-in-hand -hand with our federal, state, and local partners to disrupt their operations. This investigation is an excellent example of the strength found in FBI partnerships with local, state, and other federal law enforcement agencies, whereby resources are combined to identify and eradicate the threat posed by violent gangs in our communities, wherever they may be found, said FBI SAC Corey B. Nelson. Twelve of the charged defendants, Jeffrey Juarez, also known as AKA Dragon, AKA Tira, 35 of Sugarland, Texas, Rogelio Loera, a.k.a. Lolo, 33, of McAllen, Texas, 
Joe Lee Gonzalez, aka Jojo, 33 San Juan, Texas, Eric Ruiz, 27 Far, Texas, Rolando Flores, aka 6435 Far, Texas, Julio Cisneros, aka Grouch, 32 Alamo, Texas, Jose Garza, aka Psycho, 33 of Alamo, Texas, John Roses III, aka Popcorn, 34 Far, Texas, Daniel Queller, 35 of Brownsville, Texas, Rene Queller, aka Cheeto, 29 Donna, Texas. Guadalupe Pina, a.k.a. Lupillo, 22, Donna, Texas, and David Connolly, 28, of Mission, Texas, are accused of conspiring with one another from April 2008 through February 2011 to procure and distribute illegal drugs. Kilogram quantities of cocaine and 3,4-methylenedioxymethamphetamine, also known as MDMA or ecstasy, to carry out the business of the gang. The conspiracy charge carries a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years imprisonment up to life imprisonment, if convicted as well as a $4 million fine. Juarez, Loera, Gonzalez, and Connolly are charged individually with possessing with intent to distribute controlled substance and face a maximum of 20 years imprisonment and millions in fines, depending upon the amount of drugs involved in the offense. The 13th defendant, Fidel Quilar, 27, a.k.a. Fido, and Rene Cuellar are each charged being previously convicted felons and possessing a firearm, an offense which carries a maximum punishment of 10 years incarceration and a $250,000 fine upon conviction. The six defendants arrested today include Rogelio Loera, a.k.a. Lolo, Joe Lee Gonzalez, a.k.a. Jojo, John Rosas, a.k.a. Popcorn, Daniel Cuellar, Rene Cuellar, a.k.a. Cheeto, Guadalupe Pina, a.k.a. Lupio, and David Connolly. The five defendants presently in state custody include Jeffrey Juarez, a.k.a. Dragon, Eric Ruiz, Rolando Flores, a.k.a. 6-4, Jose Garza, a.k.a. Psycho, and Fidel Cuellar, a.k.a. Fido. A warrant remains outstanding for the arrest of Julio Cisneros, a.k.a. Grouch. This was the first major hit that the Tri-City Bombers took by the federal government. Then Agen in 2015, the Tri-City Bombers get with a second indictment that alleges that TCB members participated in a home invasion for the purpose of stealing drugs, which resulted in the shooting death of the the homeowner. The 19 defendants charged for their alleged roles in the RICO conspiracy are Mike Bueno, aka Mocho45, of Edinburgh, Alamo, Texas, Eduardo Hernandez, aka Lepo36 of Donna, Texas, Arturo Ramirez Jr., aka China41 of West Laco, San Juan, Texas, Jose Rolando Gonzalez, aka Raleigh38 of Alton, Texas. Ernesto Alonso Ruiz, a.k.a. Galito, 38, of Raymondville, Texas. Hippolito Gonzalez, a.k.a. Polly, 34, of Mission, Texas. Israel Gonzalez, a.k.a. Rayo, 34, of Far, Texas. Rolando Cruz, a.k.a. Party, 45, of Edinburgh, Mission, Texas. Jesus Silva, a.k.a. Bola, 42, of San Juan, Texas. Luis Antonio Saldivar, a.k.a. Flaco, 25, of Mission, Texas. Octavio Muniz, a.k.a. Tavo, 40, of Far, Edinburgh, Texas. Joseph Alberto Lopez, 33, of Donna, Texas. Margil Reyna, Jr., a.k.a. Mikio, 32, formerly of Alamo, Texas, now of Toledo, Ohio. Joshua Omar Santillan, 35, of Donna, Texas. Roberto Cortez, a.k.a. Robe, 35, of Far San Juan, Texas. Rene Vela, a.k.a. Gordo, 47, of Edinburgh, McAllen, Texas. Carlos De La Rosa, a.k.a. Charlie, 40, of San Juan, Texas. Ernesto Sainz, a.k.a. Tuerto, 26, of McAllen, Texas and Luis Alberto Tello, a.k.a. Wicho, 36, of Mercedes, Texas. Meanwhile, others who were charged along with the known gang members included Daniel Sands, 32, of Donna, Texas, who was charged with conspiracy to distribute cocaine, De La Rosa, Ricardo Ortega, 34, of Edinburgh, Texas, and Veronica Chavez, 38, of Mesquite, Brownsville, Texas, are charged with conspiracy to distribute marijuana and possession with intent to distribute marijuana. Ivan Rodriguez, 33, of McAllen, Texas, and Kyra Moya, 39, of Olivia, Minnesota, are charged with conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine. Roberto Reyes, a.k.a. Palan, 31, of Far, Texas, is charged with possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Ex-member said when these incidents took place, he had already made the decision to drop out of being a Tri-City Bombers. Ex did his time as a solo in the feds where he came across fellow members that were now PRM members. These fellow members had their Tri-City Bombers tattoos covered or cracked to show they were no longer Tri-City Bombers. With all the higher-ranking Tri-City Bombers, either in federal custody or state, 
they were no longer a threat on the streets of Far. Once the youth found out that their beloved Ricky was taking out by his own, they no longer had any were to recruit from. In the prison system they were losing the battle to the Texas Chicano Brotherhood that 6 of 4 was at the Telford Unit Prison and made a bad decision. He set up a meeting since they were losing the battle with the Texas Chicano Brotherhood Rolando Flores aka 6-4 and Augustin Amador aka Silent and two others agreed to a meeting with the Texas Chicano Brotherhood resulting of not taking any weapons they were dropped and stabbed multiple times and 64 ran for his life screaming for help. That night, his bad call, got a sergeant killed Augustin Amador Silent lost his life. The Tri-City Bombers were losing on both fronts in the streets and in prison, that they were no longer a threat, they were their own enemies, what once was an up-and-coming powerful organization. What is left of them is a bunch of crackheads at a corner store, washing cars and telling stories for a pack of cigarettes. So all you kids out there stay out them streets. There is nothing wrong with being yourself, thank you my subscriber for his story.